Uh, yeah, good afternoon. So I'm really pleased to be with you this afternoon, not only because my flight has been delayed by two hours and it was challenging to make it, uh, but also thanks to the beautiful weather we are having today. <laughs> Um, so, unfortunately, I had not the opportunity to see uh, the previous sessions, and, uh, but I suspect what one of the main themes today was about data and how people are using data to do analysis and to try to do uh, predictions or to, to, to create new models that will help uh, to shape the future. <laughs> so, today I will, um, I will talk a bit about uh, smart cities, but not only, uh, not from a uh, let's say, high-level perspective, but more on a pragmatic way. So the, the purpose of the conversation today is to describe how we make that happen. And one of the, what I was saying, one of the main issues we're having today is the, um, the amount of data that everybody has to collect and to manage today. So if we look at what is happening today around smart cities, so there are lots of uh, things happening around, uh, let's say, the urbanization that accelerates. We are seeing more and more people coming to live in the cities, and the cities becoming bigger and bigger. And that creates lots of issues in terms of housing, of transportation, so you have congestions everywhere. Uh, security as well. So, uh, you know, as the more people we have, the more it's a problem there might arise. And the main topic today, and we are seeing that everywhere, is around, let's say, reducing carbon footprint and sustainability. So how do we make the cities more sustainable and able to continue to grow and to uh, host more citizens? Um, so there is lots of, let's say, technology behind that. So I, I will not go deep into all of those technologies, but uh, just, in fact, smart cities, it's not rocket science. It's mostly around what we call in a more generic way the IoT, so the Internet of Things, so the capability to collect data everywhere in the city, to analyze them and make smart decisions. And we are not, let's say, making city smarter just for the sake of technology, but at the end of the day, the goal is to make, uh, to, to, to make the life of citizens easier in the city, so to shorten transportation or, or things like that. So I've just put some buzzwords there just to, uh, to do some, uh, let's say, uh, I wouldn't say education, but just to talk about those technologies. So uh, 5G, we have heard about that. It's just a way to, to accelerate the, the collection of data and to have more devices connected. Uh, LoRa is another, let's say, network dedicated to capture data from, uh, from devices and sensors. And they are all, let's say, technologies that enable to collect data and to connect objects. At the end of the day, the IoT is uh, how we connect the physical world with the digital world. And around that, you have things like, indeed, smart cities. We can benefit from these technologies by using the data that is going to be generating by the sensors, the people, the cars, that everything here are in the city. Uh, digital twin, so this is a term that has been coined for the industry 4.0, as we call it. So it's the capability to, to create a digital model of something physical and to, to use it to try to predict how the physical model is going to, uh, to react. So we see that in factories and things like that, but we also begin to see that in cities. So for example, if you look at uh, Singapore, so Singapore has done a partnership with Dassault System to create a digital twin of Singapore. So Dassault System has been modelizing the complete city to, uh, to, to have a digital model of all the city, so Singapore authorities can make smarter decisions in terms of creating uh, accommodation, new building, works, transportation, and so on. And then, let's say, how do we make that happen is thanks to technologies around the big data, so we will talk about that. Uh, AI, so why AI is important as well is that given the amount of data we are going to collect, so we are talking not about uh, terabytes, but petabytes or even exabytes of data that we are collecting. So it makes it difficult for human beings to, uh, to manage those data. So this is when AI comes into play, because if we have to take decisions in real time, only, let's say, a computer is able to analyze the data, crunch it, and, let's say, provide uh, useful information back to the devices of the people in a timely manner. 
And in terms of technology, so you have two kinds of technology, so what we call unidirectional, so just collecting the data and analyzing them, and then bidirectional, when you send back data uh, to, to the devices in the smart city. And this is especially important for uh, autonomous vehicles or, let's say, connected vehicles. Uh, because the more autonomous they are, the more, let's say, quick the decision is and uh, has to be communicated to the car. So when you have, let's say, non-critical devices having a response time in one second, that's okay. But when you have a self-driving car, I think that yeah, people would prefer to have, let's say, a couple of milliseconds instead of uh, long latency. So all these technologies are just there to, uh, to make cities smarter and to, uh, let's say, to improve the quality of life of citizens. So there are different challenges behind that. So in order to enable this technology, so there are some technical challenges, so multiple components to, to integrate, how we collect and store and manage this huge amount of data, uh, challenges around organization. Uh, so because building these models and this technology requires lots of money. And as you know, uh, the money from the city is coming from the taxes, and not all the people are willing to pay more taxes just to have more technology. So there has to be compelling use cases where people are satisfied by the service or there's a partnership between public and private in order to fund those projects. And this is one of the main issues we are facing today in terms of smart cities is, uh, so what is, uh, let's say, the benefit for the citizen and who is going to fund the project and make it work. And in terms of integration, you know, we are talking about sensors. And one of the things that is basic, but if you have a sensor, for example, with temperature that is giving you the temperature every minute, the information in itself is not that useful. And so in order to build a decent model, you have to know where this sensor is located in the city. So you, you do not only have to collect the data, but also to add metadata to make the thing more interesting and to, to create models and have, let's say, algorithms that are going to provide good results uh, to, to the smart city. And the, the last ones are really around uh, security and, let's say, ethic. Uh, because smart city are, let's say, collecting so much information, and not only about devices, but also about people. So cities, today in cities, we have a capability to know where you are, not only just with your phone and smart beacons, because you can locate people with their phones and uh, we know where they are, uh, but also if you have digital cameras everywhere in a city, with technologies like facial recognition, we are able to identify people, where they are, uh, all their, let's say, uh, all their, uh, where, where they are traveling within the city, even when the, who they are meeting in the city. So that creates issues around security, so all this data is available. We have to ensure that it is used in a good way for the benefit of the people and not to threat their privacy. And we also have to protect this data to ensure that only the authorized, authorized people are able to access it. Uh, but also to protect uh, the devices, because the more connected are the devices, the more, let's say, uh, temptation it is for a hacker to try to go in and to, uh, and to use them maybe in a, bad, in a bad way. So if, for example, you have a city with, where the traffic lights are all connected and you try to optimize the traffic by using the data of the cars and everything, uh, if someone acts into the system and modify how the uh, traffic lights behave, that might become quite dangerous for everybody. So. Uh, how do we collect all this data and manage all this data? So today you have, let's say, different parties, so the networks, the people who are actually connecting the devices to uh, the infrastructure. So all this data has to flow somewhere where you will, you will collect these petabytes of data, so you have to store them somewhere. somewhere. So you have lots of uh, interesting features in uh, the cloud providers like Azure, IWS, and so on. Uh, but you might not be willing to put all your private data into those clouds. So one of the things that you, you can think of is have a, 
uh, a dedicated infrastructure that you control, where you can store all your data, manage it, and own it. And one of the benefits of interconnection platform that, uh, that we are managing today is that we give a capability to create very uh, innovative models. So, for example, you can have all your data stored in a dedicated environment, but still you can use features in the cloud providers because they are connected through private interconnection with very high bandwidth and very low latency. So you can have the benefit and the scalability of the cloud providers while you keep the control on all your data. And it gives also flexibility, so you can really create a kind of hybrid environment where all the you can, let's say, decide to do something in a house or use cloud providers or use partners or anybody else who is, let's say, close to where you are operating, so you can really create hybridization, not only between you and the cloud, but also maybe between different cloud providers if you want to use different features uh, and so on. And wh what I was just explaining today is just something we are doing only for, uh, for Dublin or in other cities, but we do operate globally. And we have recently done, let's say, interesting projects, so not only in city, but in the transportation area. So, for example, in Germany, we are working with, uh, with Siemens, and we are trying to do predictive maintenance on the trains in order for the trains to run, let's say, more efficiently and to have less outages. So what we are doing with Siemens is that we are collecting all the data. So every time a train stops at the race station, all the data is uploaded, so we can analyze it, analyze it, use a kind of digital twin, a model, where we can modelize the behavior on the train, and then potentially do predictive maintenance, so the train can be, let's say, running uh, more often and in a more reliable manner to better serve the citizens. So thank you very much for your attention today. I don't know if there is any question coming? <laughs> it was an abrupt ending. Apologies, but can we give a round? Thank you very much, Nicholas. That was a fantastic talk. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, fascinating to hear about uh, about smart cities. That's a it's a term that's really only come into awareness in the past few years, and how we're how we're looking at cities and and trying to see how we can incorporate technology, as you as you shared with the devices, all the all our smartphones, all the data that we have, how we can yeah. use this. Um, I'm just wondering, a quick question: uh, What would you consider to be the smartest city? Is there someone that is there is there a location that's leading the way in, in this in implementing that in their in their city? Um. Sorry? Like, the, as in, is there a leader in this? Uh, 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 is there a, a city you would consider to be leading the way? No, there is no real leader today. So there are lots of, let's say, experimental things happening. Uh, some cities are trialing things by themselves. Some are doing partnerships with people like, for example, JC Deco, you know, all the furnitures within the city. That's a, a good place to put sensors or to enable, say, Wi Fi for everybody, Wi Fi for everybody. But mm. now there is no clear leader. And even in the from a technology perspective, all the system integrators or cloud providers are working on this area, but there is no clear leader yet. Okay. Maybe Dublin. <laughs> Who <laughs> Maybe. Knows? Okay, well, thank Nicholas again for a fantastic talk. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Take that. Thank you. Thank you.